Well, hello everybody. I'm coming to you from the Double Tree parking garage in Little Rock, right next to the Robinson Performing Arts Center. Uh, sort of a weird place to do a video, but I've had a couple of days to think about what I wanted to say. And I wanted to try to get this out so that people might have a chance to see it on Sunday before the new work week starts. There are parts of my life as a musician that are really fun. And there are things around those fun things that are not so fun. It's fun to perform. It's not fun to travel two and a half hours each way to Little Rock for rehearsals and performances. It's nice to stay in the hotel, but it's not necessarily fun to be away from my wife more than one night. To be away from my dogs more than one night. Conferences are cool to go to. Travel is not my favorite thing. I've got back and neck problems now from holding the instrument for years, and it's a legitimate thing that I'm trying to work through, but it is pain. Um, but I, all that to say, it's all worth it when I have a great performance. It's all worth it when I have a great lesson with a student. It's all worth it when I know that I've been able to make a difference somehow for someone else. That's worth it to me. And I also know that for years I didn't trust my gut because I had a lot of people uh, make me feel like my intuition was not very good, that I didn't know what I was doing or that I was somehow less than. And I've pretty much decided that I am not interested in those voices making me feel that way anymore. Um, period. End of story. And one of the ways that I'm going to fight those voices is by when I have a, a, a intuition or gut thing that pops up that, that I feel like I need to speak about, I'm going to speak about it. I'm not going to care about the optics of it. I'm going to speak about it. Because I think that if I'm going to take the time to talk about it, that it's something that's worth talking about. Right? Especially when it's an issue that I know that our current students are facing. So one of the things that I teach at my university is music connections class, first year experience. Um, for those of you that are not initiated in that program, it's sort of a how to be a successful college student class. Um, it's a good class. It's a class I wish I'd had for numerous reasons. But after talking to those students and others, I get the prevailing, overwhelming sort of thought from these students that if they can't already do fill in the blank with whatever, you know, we're talking about, that they maybe they don't, they don't need to be a musician. Maybe they need to go do something else with their lives. And while I can appreciate that sometimes the path of resistance um, is not always the most alluring or the most exciting thing, I just finished telling you that there were parts about my career that I don't enjoy, but they allow me to do the things that I do enjoy. I don't like to travel, but once I'm there, I'm able to do some cool things. I would just want to encourage you that you may not be very good at ear training class right now, that you may struggle with score identification or, I'm sorry, chord identification or interval ID or melodic or rhythmic dictation. It's okay. You need to know that it's okay that you're not good at those things. That no one tested you on those things before you started in the major. And that just because the quizzes are not A's like they might have been in high school and everything else that you took, it doesn't mean that you don't have the aptitude to do this. So I want to share my story here a little bit with you. Um, every fall, I was telling a colleague a couple of days ago that, that, that fall always feels like college to me. It feels like football. It feels like marching band. It feels like college. The summer doesn't feel like college. The turning of the leaves, the I'm not a pumpkin spice latte guy, but that whole thing, you know, sweater weather, you know, slightly cooler, everything. It's just a changing season. And I have a weird double-edged sort of connotation with this thing because October is right around the time when I started to have serious doubts my freshman year of college about whether I needed to do this because music theory and ear training and piano and music literature, the four sort of 
four classes of a freshman music curriculum at, in my experience. I, I just wasn't very good at it. And I was a good trombone player coming out of high school. I don't know if I was a great trombone player, but I was a good trombone player. And there were, I think there was a, an internal expectation on my part that like I needed to be able to do it all because I could play well. I had never had a class in music theory. I had never had a class in ear training. I had never had a class in piano. And I sure as heck had never had a class in, in music literature. And when I would get something wrong, I felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. Like I wasn't going to be able to make it because I couldn't identify a major minor seventh chord. Or I couldn't identify harmonic minor versus melodic minor. And October's around the time that I had a shift in my brain where I just didn't want to embarrass myself anymore. So I stopped asking questions. I stopped reaching out for help. And in some cases, I stopped going to class. Which made the problem worse, not better. And I'm not happy about it. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't like bringing it up. I don't like talking about it. But all of my sort of my sort of college student delinquency came from not understanding and not being made to feel like it was okay to not understand. Now, through the grace of God and many great professors who really worked with me to help rebuild my confidence and give me the opportunity to sort of redeem myself, I made it through okay. Which leads me to believe that just as much of the equation is on the teacher to help you get it right as it is on you to learn the material. I always thought it was all me, that I was awful and I was not cut out for it. And it's easy to then attach labels of lazy or entitled and, and maybe some of those existed but the core of it started with not understanding and not feeling like I had the opportunity to share with anyone that I didn't understand so if you are a music student and I don't care if you're at my school or some other school and you're reading this or watching this if you're having doubts if you're worried if you're scared if you don't think that you're good enough or you're getting quizzes back from your classes that are bleeding with red ink. It's okay. We're not even really at midterm yet. We're getting close, but we're not even completely halfway through the semester. And if you start telling yourself that you're not good enough now, and you stop asking questions, and you stop seeking help, and you stop doing work outside of class to get better at these things... Uh, then it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to end up not doing well because you're setting yourself up to not do well. So I would encourage you that if you have a friend that's good at one of these things that you're struggling at, confide in them. Ask them for help. If you have a professor that's available, go during their office hour. Ask for help. And I'll say this, it's probably not a popular thing to say now, Humble yourself enough to say, I'm not, it's not possible for me to be great at everything that I do. I don't understand. And I think you'll find that in most cases, the overwhelming majority of people are interested in helping you get from where you are to where you want to be. Now, I know that's easier said than done. But I want you to think about all the times that you've had great musical experiences, the, the kinds of things that made you want to continue this path after high school. The moments that just sort of solidified for you that this was the thing that you wanted to do. I want you to think about those. And I want you to think about also this bad feeling of not knowing or understanding. Is it worth it to you to walk away from it all without ever having really asked for help to make it better? Is it most important for you to be able to walk away with your pride intact? Or is it more important to know that you exhausted all your options and maybe found the potential solution to solve everything? I think that's more important. And I wish you luck. And I wish you courage. And I hope you figure it out.
because the world needs more dedicated musicians who love this, who who are able to learn about themselves through the process. We just need more of that in the world. So I hope you'll I hope you'll take this in the spirit which it's given. Uh, sorry again for the backdrop being a parking garage, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I hope you like this, and I'll talk to you soon.